we're here on the gun range. In the last video, we got the scope mounted. We used the leveling kit. We got everything rocking and rolling. Made sure we're cant is good. There's no uneven levels through the scope, so we're ready to rock and roll. This is a turret scope. It does have a turret on it. From Bass Pro Cabela's, this is one of their intensity line scopes. And what I did there is I just unscrewed up, pulled this off. We're gonna adjust it. We're gonna sight this scope in, in this video, and really just break down how to do all that. So just to start right off the bat, I'm just gonna get these off, and then I'm gonna bore sight it, and just make sure we're at least close. So to start this off, I'm gonna go ahead, release the bolt, get it out of there, just put it to the side for now. And what I'm gonna do is just bore sight. It's a fairly simple process. All you're gonna do is look straight down the barrel and kind of see what you're pointing at and then look down the scope and see what you're pointing at. And if they're fairly close, it, uh, hopefully it'll at least be on paper. I'd probably say st start somewhere around 25 to 50 yards so you know at least where you're hitting hopefully <laughs> and then move it out to 100 or wherever else you need to be and then sight it in from there, depending if you want to sight it at zero at 100 or 200, uh, inch high at 100, whatever, whatever it might be that you want to do. But this just gets you real close, at least hopefully it'll be on paper. <laughs> I'm just going to take one shot down range and make sure we're on paper. Okay, we're on paper, that's a good start. We are an inch to the right and five inches low. So most scopes will be roughly a quarter inch at 100 yards per click. If you're at 100 yards, four clicks would be one inch on, on most scopes. If you're at 50 yards, eight clicks and so on, it would, it would keep multiplying as you get closer or dividing as you get farther. It's gonna depend on your scope, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it about four clicks to the left and I'm gonna bring it closer to 20 clicks coming up. So go whichever way you want your impact to go. So this is bringing your impact to the right so we want it to go left. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four. This one, we're gonna to wanna to bring impact up. So we're gonna to have to move the scope will go down. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's where I wanna be. Here. Inch and Inch seven. And three quarter high, straight center. Beautiful. That's exactly what we're looking for. So that should be dead on at 200. And more times than not, the back of the box will give you a ballistic chart. I would recommend still shooting out to whatever distance you plan on shooting out in the field. Whether it's a elk hunt and you plan on shooting 300 yards, if it's a whitetail hunt and you plan on shooting 30 yards. Whatever you plan on shooting, I would recommend just going and doing it. Make sure you're comfortable, because if it's closer than you expect, that round's not gonna hit necessarily where you think it's gonna hit. That being said, obviously you're on a hunt, you never know what's gonna happen. So just be prepared for anything. Uh, other than that, I mean, this gun shoots beautifully as you can probably see in the video. It's quiet with our Griffin suppressor. It, there's barely any push to it. This is a 6.8. We've been shooting this round for a couple years now, quite a few years now. And we've all kind of fell in, fallen in love with it here. Um, there's nothing honestly really bad to say. This is beautiful. So what we're gonna do now is finish tightening up the scope, especially with this turret. It's not what most people are probably used to when it comes to setting in a scope. Usually they're used to this easy twist and click, but with this turret, it gives us the option to set a zero. And if you want to calibrate it for farther distances than 200 yards or whatever you set it in at, you can get yourself a sheet and really make like, if you plan on shooting 300, 400, 500 yards, with that sheet, you can look at the sheet you can get a ballistic chart. You can actually kind of figure out where you're gonna to need to be to raise your MOA and uh, get you a rough idea of where you're gonna be, where you're gonna be hitting at those distances. And again, I recommend shooting them if you plan on shooting them, especially in the field. So now for this piece, we're gonna take this tiny little baby Allen key and we're gonna loosen these little, little screws inside of the scope. So we got them all loose. What we're gonna do now is, it's gonna be hard to see, but this piece that I'm touching with my end of my finger, my index finger, you can see where there's two slots that are different than the third. So these two slots are deeper, which allow for this uh, tooth to go through it, like that. So the way that this turret spins is you're gonna wanna go zero up. You don't wanna go back, back numbers. So the way that it's gonna spin is counterclockwise. So what we're gonna do is turn this little silver P 
piece, and it's kind of hard to explain, but there's that, that tooth, how it doesn't go through that, that individual piece. When you, when you spin this silver piece clockwise, the opposite way that you want the turret to spin, you're gonna reach a limit. When you reach that limit right here, you're gonna retighten those little like set screws that are inside of this silver bit inside the turret. You're gonna tighten them, make sure it's all the way to that very end. Make sure they're nice and snug without snapping your Allen key because that would be terrible. <laughs> and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that zero, that zero mark, on your turret and you're gonna line it up perfectly with that white line. After that, you'll take the top screw, screw it back onto your turret, nice and tight. Take your side cap of your ring, tighten that nice up. And on this scope, we actually have a focus ring as well as a light interior on the inside of the scope. You can use that if if you need some extra boost in the, in the scope, if it's getting dark or if it's too bright and you need a little extra light coming through, whatever it might be. Um, the focus also just helps with, if you have a weird eye relief or somebody else is shooting the firearm um, that isn't you, they can, of course, fiddle with their eye relief adjustments as well as the focus and it can help them kind of find that perfect, that perfect point in the, in the scope for whoever might be shooting. Other than that, I would say this, this firearm is ready to do its job out in the field.